In this session, we'll complete our custom table project by assigning materials to the components, and then we'll insert the table into InfraWorks 360. Now I'm starting out in InfraWorks. Here we can see the finished example. This represents the original table that I created for my site plan. This is the table that we are recreating. Now that we've seen the goal, let's jump back over to AutoCAD. Here you can see we're picking up right where we left off. I've got my table and my umbrella modeled. Before I do anything, let's take a quick look at the units in this drawing. I'm going to open the application menu. I will come down to Drawing Utilities, and I'll select Units. Here you can see it's set to Feet. InfraWorks 360 will look at this setting when we insert this table into the InfraWorks model. It'll use this to determine scale. So since I drew it in Feet, I'm ensuring that my units are also set to Feet. Let's click OK. I will then pan the drawing over. We're going to start by assigning materials to these objects. I can do that by going to the Visualize Ribbon tab, and then I'll come down to the Materials panel. From here, I'll click the Materials Browser. This is the area where I can go shopping through the Autodesk Library of Photorealistic Materials. Let me expand the Home area here. I'll expand the Library, and right here you can see all the categories. Once you select a category, you can scroll up and down, and you can select whatever you like. I'm going to use this search box to do this quickly. I'd like to use a white material that symbolizes white paint. I'm just going to type white here in the search string, and then that sorts the materials to all materials that are associated with that string. Let's come down to plastic, and I'm going to choose this PVC white. I'll click this small arrow to add that material to the drawing. Then I'll come back up to the search string, and I'll type red. I'm looking for a nice red paint. Once again, we're in the plastic category. I'm going to drag down and I'll select this one, smooth red, and I'll click the arrow to add that material to the drawing. Let's get one more. I'd like a black material for the pole. I'll just go ahead and type black, and let's add this low gloss black. When I'm finished, I'll click the X to close the search string, and you can see those new materials in my file. Now to add those materials to the objects, I will do it via drag and drop. Let's change the visual style first so we can see those materials as they're applied. I'm going to change this from conceptual to realistic. I will then add the material to the pole. Let's drag this over and I'll drop it on the pole. I will then click hold and drag. We'll drop the red paint onto the top of the table. If you want to, you can go the other way around. I can select all of these seats, for example, and then select the material. Let's orbit this and then I can use a nice crossing window to select the base. We'll make that PVC white. We'll orbit this up, and I'll center it on screen. Now, if you remember the example we just looked at, I had alternating colors as we went around the top of the umbrella. Unfortunately, I can't do that since the umbrella is all one piece. So to make that possible, let's slice it. I'm going to close the materials dialog box here for just a second. Let's zoom in, and I'd like to isolate this umbrella on screen. I'll select it. And then I'll come down and click the Isolate button, and I'll choose Isolate Objects. I will then set my visual style to X-Ray to make it a little easier to see the object snaps. So to slice this into wedges, I'm going to go back to the Home tab. And then in the Solid Editing panel, I'll launch the Slice tool. I'd like to slice this object, and I'll press Enter. Notice down at the command line, there are many ways we can slice a solid. I could slice it with a planar object. I could slice it with a surface. I could slice it by selecting the various axes. In this case, I'm going to slice it using three points. The three points I pick will define my slicing plane. I'm going to press Enter to access that option. I will then zoom in. And to slice it in half, I will pick the endpoint here. I'll pick the endpoint right below it. And then I'll pick one of these opposite endpoints. Finally, AutoCAD will ask me, what do I want to do with the two halves? Do I want to keep them both, or do I want to select the side that I want to keep? I'll just go ahead and hit Enter to keep both sides. And you can see this was split in half. Let's split it again. I'm going to tap the space bar to go right back into the command. I'm going to split this right side, Enter. And I'm going to tap the space bar again to access the three points option. Let's slice it using this endpoint, the endpoint right below, and then the opposite endpoint. I will then press Enter to keep both sides. Let's back up. At this point, I no longer need this piece or this piece. I will select them and I'll press Delete. Now we can array this object around to recreate the shape of the umbrella. To array, I'm going to come up to the Modify panel. I'll open the Array menu and I'll choose Polar Array. I'll select this wedge and press Enter. The center point of the array will be this end point out here at the corner. And in this case, Six items happens to be perfect. I'll go ahead and hit Enter to accept the array. 
Now that I'm finished refining the umbrella, we can end the object isolation. We'll click the isolate button again, and I'll choose end. Let's flip the visual style here back to realistic. I'll back up and we'll kind of center this over here to the left. And then we will go back to the visualize tab and we'll bring back the materials browser. I will then select this wedge, this one, and this one, and we'll make that white. I will then select this one, this one, and this one, and we'll make them red. Then I'll drag this red over and we'll drop it on that sphere at the top. Finally, let's zoom in. If you recall, the model that we looked at earlier had logos on the red wedges. Let me show you how I did that. I'm going to open the visual style menu and we'll go back to conceptual momentarily. The trick to adding your own materials is to know the size of the face that you're mapping those materials to. I'm going to type DI to do a quick distance. Let's find the distance from this endpoint to the corresponding endpoint on the other side. We can see that's 3.86 approximately. So 3.86 wide by, I'll tap spacebar to go back into the distance command. We'll grab the front endpoint and we'll take that perpendicular to the top. I can see that is 0.75. So now that I know the size of this face, I can create an image that matches these dimensions proportionally. Let's jump over to Photoshop momentarily. Over here you can see the image I created. Now there's no magic to this at all. Let me go to the image menu and I'll come down to resize and I'll choose image size. Here you can see my image measures 3.87 inches wide by 0.75 inches tall. It's the same proportions as the face that I'm mapping to. Let's close this and we'll jump back over to AutoCAD. I will then set the visual style back to realistic. To create the custom material for these faces, I'm going to click this globe in the lower left corner of the materials browser. In the menu, I'll come all the way down to the bottom and I'll choose new generic material. I will then give my material a name. I'll call it logo panel. And then I don't have to do a whole lot here. I just have to click the image field. Here I'll select that logo image we just looked at. I'll choose open. I will then come over and click that image field again. And here's where I'll set the scale. I want to make sure that this material is the same size as the face. I can do that by dragging down to the scale area. Let me unlock the proportions. And I'm going to set this to 3.87 feet by 0.75 feet. Enter. When I'm finished, I'll go ahead and close the texture editor, and then I'll close the material editor. To add this material to the object, I will drag it over, and I'll hold my control key when I release it over this face. This is perfect, just needs a little bit of registration. I'm going to drag my materials browser down just a little bit. We'll open the materials panel again, and then I'll open the material mapping panel. That's what planar mapping is for. If I select this, I can then control click the face I want to edit, and I'll press enter. It will then recognize that image matches that face. I'll press enter again to accept the mapping. Let's orbit this around. I'll drag over. I'll control drop. We'll come back to material mapping. I'll control click, enter, enter. Let's do the last one. We'll orbit this around. I'll control drop. Material mapping, control click, enter, enter. Perfect. Now that I'm finished, I can close the materials browser. Let's zoom out. We'll orbit this around and take a look. At this point, we are ready to export this model for use in InfraWorks. I can do that by opening the application menu. I'll come down to export. From here, I'll choose FBX. I will then select the folder where I'd like to place my model, and I'll give it a name. I'm going to call this Custom Table, and I'll click Save. When I export this, I'm going to export selected entities. Let me click the Select Objects button, and I will window all of these entities. I'll press Enter. I'd like to export the objects with their materials, and I'd like the materials embedded. Let's click OK. That's it. I'm now ready to drop this object into InfraWorks. Back in the InfraWorks environment, I'm going to switch to a different proposal. Let's choose Temp. This is essentially the same model, just minus those tables. I can now use this environment to insert the new tables. To drop the tables into the model, I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer. I will then navigate to that same FBX folder, and I'll drag and drop the FBX into my model. In the data source configuration, we'll change the type to City Furniture. Let's choose 3D Model for a second. Right there, you can see the model. I will then go to the Geolocation tab. 
and we will insert this using interactive placing. Here you can see I'm holding the table from the insertion point that we established in AutoCAD. I can double click to place this in the model. I can then come over and choose Close and Refresh. Now that I've placed the table, we can close the Data Sources panel. We can zoom in and take a look. So the next time your InfraWorks model requires some custom 3D content, try leveraging AutoCAD to build those objects yourself. With a little practice, you'll find you can create just about any custom object you may need. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.